Okay, continuing on then with the uh, selection criteria for our various risk management controls. Um, uh, I mentioned isolation, economy, and uh, least common mechanism, and, and I mentioned that in relation to the universal application. And so, uh, you know, when uh, we're talking about universal application and at the same time we uh, tell you about isolation and, and least common mechanism, they sound uh, like this is uh, a contradiction. And it's, it's not. Uh, universal application, we want to be able to to use it as many applicable places as as we can. We don't want to have to do, uh, you know, different types of controls in different types of situations. If at all possible, we want to have uh, one size fits all. Well, not necessarily that yeah, seldom works in security, but we want, you know, as far as possible, one application fits all. Um, in terms of isolation, um, what we are talking about is not having the control, the safeguard, the countermeasure dependent on what it is protecting. So, uh, you know, we don't want to have a situation where, for example, somebody had a, uh, you know, they're concerned about power going out, which is very common. We'll talk about that when we get into physical security and operations. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, so they had a backup generator and, and they'd heard all the stories about the backup generators running out of fuel so they built a giant fuel tank for it now it was big enough that they the only area they had to put it was uh, lower down than the generator so they had to have a pump to pump the fuel from the storage tank up to the generator. And, you're probably way ahead of me here, they connected the pump, which was of course an electric pump, to the mains power. They didn't connect it to the backup generator. So of course when the power went out, the pump didn't run. The pump didn't run, the fuel didn't get up to the generator, the generator you know, started up fine, and after running for a few minutes, coughed and died. So, you know, the, the, the point is what we're protecting against is loss of power from the grid. And we depended on the grid to power the pump, to pump the fuel up to the generator. So, you know, we want isolation from the problem. Um, economy and in terms of uh, you know, it's always the cost-benefit analysis, and, and this is, you know, similar, but it's, you know, what are the resources that we need? Um, what, uh, what are the requirements? Um, you know, how, how much are, you know, of our resources are we uh, expending for this particular control? Uh, so, you know, looking at, at that, uh, we always have fixed uh, resources and, and we've got to, you know, economize. Uh, and least common mechanism. Uh, again, um, it, this comes back to the, uh, the isolation issue. That do we have uh, something on which all of our... Uh, systems, including our protection systems, depend. Um, you know, we, we want to reduce that as much as possible. In, in some ways, it's not possible. They all rely on electrical power. That's, you know, that's a fact of the matter. Okay, you know, then uh, we have to make special provisions for certain things in, in terms of our backup power supply, our generators, our batteries, our, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but, uh, you know, make, as, as, insofar as possible, you know, least 
common doesn't mean no common, but you know, reduce the, the dependencies, the interdependencies. Um, then we've got to look at the acceptance and tolerance of the controls by personnel. Um, and I am reminded of uh, the uh, um, uh, iris scanning and retina scanning. Now, retina scanning never really caught on. People didn't like it because you have to go and put your eye right up to the reader. It's, you know, right against the cup and uh, that sort of thing. And, you know, when you tell them you're shining a laser into their eyes, uh, people are a little bit hesitant maybe to do that. So, you know, retina scanning was never... Uh, uh, it was never really accepted. It, it, you know, a lot of a lot of problems. It wasn't implemented a lot of places. You don't see an awful lot of retina scanners. Uh, now, uh, in terms of iris scanning, nobody's got a problem with it. Partly because they don't even know when it's taking place. Um, generally speaking, uh, the cameras for retina scanners. Uh, you know, they just look like a, a bit of a webcam there, hanging around. Uh, you, well, you go through the border. Um, and they're, you know, they're scanning your retinas. Uh, uh, I, I remember one flight, uh, I was coming back from Brazil, and of course everybody else on the flight is Brazilian, we're flying into Dallas and changing planes, and, uh, going up to the customs desk, you know, they're asking everybody for their passport, and, and then they are fingerprinting them, because they're all Brazilians, they, they don't get to go into the United States without being fingerprinted, and they do the iris scanning. Now, people don't even notice the iris scanning, because it's just this little webcam there. They know about the fingerprinting, because they, you know, are having their, you know, putting their hands onto a plate, uh, and, and having the scanner look at their fingerprints and so on and so forth. They don't even realize that their irises are being scanned at the same time. Uh, and so, you know, that that is accepted. That's tolerated. Uh, you know, partly because people don't even realize it, but it's not a problem. It, it you know, it's not an issue. And yet, you know, it's just, in a sense, the same thing as retina scanning. But... The, the iris scanning is much more tolerated. So we, we need to have uh, our security protections tolerated by personnel so that they will use them, so that they won't find ways around them. And again, you know, going back to the policy issue, once you create something that people get used to finding a way around, then they also start finding ways around other things and you you don't want that so um, automation um, try and have automation in in your tools people are not good at doing the same thing the same way every single time over and over again uh, really interesting to look at the movie version of uh, catch me if you can and there's examples there of how he is uh, sort of disrupting uh, the processing that should be going on when he's trying to pass bad checks and things like that. Um, so, you know, automated machines are, are better at that sort of thing. Now, you people are, are better at sort of figuring out things once they've had their paranoia triggered. But, you know, machines are better at doing the same thing the same way every time. Um, reaction and recovery. Um, when we, uh, when that, you know, safeguard gets triggered, what happens? What is it that, that is, um, is going on? And, and, uh, when we do the, the course, there's on this slide something that says avoid asset destruction. And, and people, you know, sort of wonder about that. But so often we don't think about it. And in fact, what happens is the asset gets destroyed or, you know, damaged in some way. Avoid that.